Hey, what's up guys? Welcome what up? to the Students Podcast. We're, We're back. super excited to talk to you today. Uh, Ty and I are just gonna go back and forth on some questions. Ty told me in some questions for me, so I'm gonna let you just spit it, bro. Yeah, what what yeah, kind of my, questions you got? My first question, Landon, is with coronavirus, with everything that's going on, with social media beginning to explode, yeah. uh, where do you see the future of youth ministry? Okay. Well, first of all, I think this is a good thing in that I think we're being becoming more connected than we ever have before with our students. Um, and we're engaging in social media in a new way. Uh, some churches were already on the cutting edge of this stuff when it comes to engaging in social media, being on all these different platforms. Um, but I think this is just expediting where culture was already going. And so I think in this season, uh, one, once we start to implement all these different structures and systems for how we're going to develop content and uh, grow our social media followings and influence, I think this is really something that's going to stick. Like, I don't think this is just like a, uh, you know, all of a sudden the pot starts boiling and this is the steam that comes out. No, this is going to continue. Um, I think afterwards, I know for us, it at least it is at Res Students, we're going to continue to produce great content. We're going to continue to engage on social media uh, like never before, build systems and teams that have a emphasis and a focus on that. Because I think it's valuable for all of us to be able to engage, not just on a Sunday and not just on a Wednesday, but maybe on our drive to work, on our drive to school, uh, wherever, whatever you're doing, that we can continue to engage in conversation, uh, talk about how Jesus is changing our lives and the good news of the gospel. And I think yeah. if we can bring that to people wherever they are, throughout their week, whenever they want to log in, whenever they want to get on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram, they can find content that's engaging, uh, content that's uh, entertaining, and content that'll actually help them with spiritual and leadership development. I love it. Landon is just hearing these questions for the first time, so he has had no time to prepare. All right, Landon, what do you? What would you say as, as we're not having weekend services at right. church anymore, we're not having large, sure. small group gatherings, you, you found momentum on Wednesday night services for students, yeah. but you were you were running 95 kids and you can't do that anymore. Right. Um, many of your students serve on a dream team at Res Church on the weekend, they can't do that anymore. Right. What do you have to say to, to your leaders, to your students who were heavily involved um, and who want to be a part of things, but they just don't know how to yeah. be a part of things? Right. I think the first thing I'd say is uh, right now is the perfect time to connect in small groups, connect with your small group leaders, continue to connect uh, virtual groups, e-groups. Uh, I've mentioned it actually in a previous podcast. It's, I think it's important that we realize that e-groups are, are just as valuable as small groups. We may not be able to meet together in person, but that doesn't mean we can't meet. Um, like Pastor Jonathan said, church was not canceled. The church was unleashed Let's in this go. season. Let's and I really go. believe that these e-groups are going to be vital in this time to, to uh, maintain connection and making sure we're seeing each other's faces and we're smiling, we're choosing joy, right? Uh, and I think that if we can continue to connect in those groups, uh, we can develop content, we can develop ideas. Uh, and honestly, right now, while we can still meet in groups of 10, I would love to just find ways to where if you're interested in continuing to serve at a dream team level, you can come and help with the Northern Colorado Dream Center this season. You can help with developing content with kids, with youth. There's lots of different places to serve as far as developing content, helping with video ideas, jumping in there on things like the rap battle. Um, and, and podcasts. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think it would be awesome to bring some students, bring totally. some kids on a podcast and let yep. them talk about what they're learning in this season, uh, talk about what it's like to be homeschooled because now everybody's homeschooled. So right. I think that's kind of funny. Uh, you know, we're always picking on homeschoolers because it's yeah. like, you know, you, you guys just get to hang out at home, take vacations, and you go travel around all these places. Well, now everybody is, but they ain't traveling. They're just stuck in traveling. their living room. They're stuck in their living room. Everyone's moving to this online platform for school. But not right now, it's spring break, right? It's spring break it's right spring now. It's spring break. And then Still. next week is spring break for another group of schools. Is it really? Yeah, totally. So there's there go. different spring breaks depending on like what school district you're in. But well, it's happening now. Of course, now. I forgot. But, but I don't think really, anybody's going back to school students anytime out in soon. Greeley. We got Fort Collins, Loveland. We got people all over the place. Come on. I love that. I got another question for you. Maybe this is the last question, question, Landon. Okay. So, so as pastors at Res, right. we, we live to carry the heart of our senior pastor, Jonathan Wiggins. Right. Everything we do um, is coming out of his heart because we, we believe and we trust yes. his heart is fully in line with Christ. Yep. And, and it couldn't be more evident. Like that is just black and white. And, and so, so tell me this, Landon, as, as you're under Pastor Jonathan and Amy, as, as you're leading in their anointing and, and in the... In the in the culture uh, that they have produced, what is burning in your heart? So coronavirus, 
aside social dynamics aside like yeah. from just this pure place of relationship with God as, as you're under under a senior pastor who loves you who's who's connecting you yeah. uh, but as an individual what is burning in your life right now I would say this uh, Pastor Jonathan said something to me the other day he said Landon in this season all I want to do is care for people hmm. come on people are hurting People are worried, people are scared, and we need to do a really good job of caring for people because that's his heart. So that's my heart in this season is how can we care for our students best? How can we engage them best? How can we keep them feeling connected in a season of isolation? Um, and so we're gonna do everything with social media that we can, but I would like to continue to find ways uh, to care for individuals. And so I, I'm just gonna continue to search that out. I'm praying about it, I'm asking God, I'm asking students, how, do you, how can I help you feel cared for? How can I help you stay connected in this season? Uh, I think e-groups, like I said, is, is one way that we can care for people, but just phone calls, relationships, connections, text messages, making sure that every one of our students feels loved and feels supported in this season, uh, letting you guys know that we are praying for you. Yeah, We're praying for you guys every day because we know it's hard and we know there's family members that are sick and, and people are possibilities of losing jobs and, and it's a scary season to live in, but we can trust in God. We can trust that he's faithful. We can trust that he, yeah. Pastor Jonathan said something in staff meeting. He said, God didn't send the virus, but he will get glory out of this crisis. That's right. And I really believe that, man, if we lean into God in this season, we're going to grow like we've never grown before. The church is going to grow like it's never grown before. Uh, it, it, in Acts, it talks about how they went from house to house and, and they shared meals together and they had this gladness of heart. And it was in that time that the Lord added to the church daily. I really believe this is a season that we can capitalize on. I believe this is a season where we're going to be truly connected yeah. and, and where this church is going to grow exponentially, both spiritually, physically. I, I just believe that God's going to do something really cool. And I love that Pastor Jonathan's heart is just to care for people. And so I'm going to do my best to serve and to care and to love students and to love God and to love people, host watch parties, host e-groups, connect with students, text students. Um, and find ways to, to, to bring value to their lives. Come on. I had a kid last night. I think he's a first grader. He got on his mom's phone, who's one of my dream team members, and did a Marco Polo. And okay. here comes this first grader on the phone. Pastor Ty! And he didn't really have anything to say. And, and so I Marco Polo him right back. If you don't know what Marco Polo is, you gotta get it. It's just this video app just like a text message, it's super sweet. And I, I videoed him right back. Hey man, I love you, I'm thinking about you, I miss love you. It. Have a good night's sleep tonight, my friend, love you. And and I was just thinking like, as a kid, um, I think that means a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that even means a lot to me that, that these people wanna stay connected. So the right. truth is, Landon, everybody is wanting connection yeah. and how can we as a, as a greater community continue to facilitate it for one another? Yeah. I that, think I can speak firsthand to, to the idea of how much that means to a kid. Um, so Arrow is sick right now and I know Penelope's sick right now, um, but Pastor Ty is our kid's pastor, amazing. He's one of the best kids pastors I've ever known in my whole life. Thanks, man. And uh, he sent a video to Errol and Marco Polo and just said, hey, buddy, I love you, Errol. I'm praying for you. I believe in you. I'm letting you know that Penelope and I are praying for you. Yeah. And I showed it to Errol and his face like just lit up. Like he just got the biggest smile and yes. just seeing your face that you cool. care. <laughs> and uh, even, even Pastor Ty walking in uh, to the studio today, Arrow saw him and came running up to him was like, you need to come play with me. And we're like, oh, social distancing. <laughs> I was trying to chop my head off with his sword. That's he did. cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I just love your heart for our kids and for our kids ministry. And you're just doing such a fantastic job. And I just think that you add so much value to our church and to my life and to my ministry. And I love you a lot, bro. Wow. Thank you. I feel the same about you. I think I was telling my team Monday, like, I don't know what it means to be a kids pastor right now. I, I think my job is, is extremely different. I want to do everything I can to serve the community, yeah. everything I can to maximize every opportunity and open door yeah. to love people. And I don't really think I'm a kids pastor right now. I think I'm a small groups coordinator. I yeah. think my, <laughs> my one job is keep people connected yeah. and, and help one another love one another. Like, like 
it's going to be a lot if you are answering every single phone call yeah. and every single need. Yeah. You can't do it. We can't do it. So being able to really rely on the body of Christ and yeah. people we know. And, and hey, I've, I heard about this need. I called somebody this morning. Hey, there's a kid who needs a home visit. Would you be willing to do it? Mm -hmm. And this woman stepped right up. She's like, I'd be privileged to do that. I love it. And these are the types of things that will keep keep the church moving forward right now. Yep. That was us this morning, just uh, having a, actually a Zoom call or a Marco Polo, any of those work well. Uh, but we did a, something called house party this morning with our leaders and just told them, hey, this is the platform we're using for small groups. Um, and we had sat at the table and Brooke and I literally uh, developed every single one of our leaders is going to get groups of, in groups of eight, uh, different groups of eight uh, that they're going to call and host house parties with and play games with and connect. Um, I think that's what we need is we need more people to step up and say, hey, I'll host a neat group. Hey, I'll be a part of this. Hey, I'm going to serve uh, in all capacities of the church, not just in youth or kids, but in every area of ministry that we have. We need people to step up. We need people to lead. Um, and so can you tell me a little bit? I remember you, you mentioned this the other day uh, when it comes to small groups for kids in this season, e-groups, things like that. Uh, I heard you said something about family groups. Can you can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, I think I want to keep it as simple as possible for people because we're limited uh, by having 10 or less people in a home. Yeah. That that definitely limits you to if you're you, here's what I envision. If if you are a family, invite another family over. And as long as we're safe to do that, as long as nobody in your family, nobody in the other family is sick, showing signs or symptoms of, yeah. of anything that we need to be watchful of. As long as everybody's healthy, no underlying health, health conditions, invite another family over. And I would invite them over for a Sunday church service, and I'd invite them over for dinner on another day of the week. Yeah, I love like, let's not be limited to physical interaction just on Sundays because there's a watch party. I think that's a great opportunity. But at this season in life, like think of a family that you know and invite them over and then be paying attention and, and our team's trying to resource as well as we can families who are not connected to be able to be connected to right to somebody who could host them the whole point is as simple as it possibly could be invite another family over and stay under that 10 person limit so that you can facilitate connection for for the adults in the room there's single moms out there that don't have anybody uh, to connect with yeah we need to help them find friends and they need help and everything that we can do to to have people gathering in a safe way is the goal so keeping it simple love family that. group so where could if, if there's parents watching this or, or uh, even kids uh, where can they find you on Instagram on Facebook what how can they connect with you to the, continue connection yeah the easiest way is the res kids Facebook and Instagram pages okay. and then we also launched this weekend a res parenting Facebook page yep. and I think we we have people uh, on the team monitoring monitoring that daily yep. man send us a message like keep it easy hey I'm a mom I have two kids my husband and I are looking for a group to connect with. We live in Greeley. Yep. Like that, that is so easy for me to then take your information and connect you to another family who has the same desire. Great. And then that goes for students too, uh, that Res Parents page. You can find student information as well as kids information. Um, that's something both of our teams are collaborating on for you. Uh, and then with the students page, you can at res.students on Instagram, on TikTok. Uh, we have a YouTube. Um, and we're continuing to move into other platforms to make sure we provide as many ways for your students and kids to connect as possible. But we just want to thank you guys for listening to the podcast. Thanks for joining yeah. in today. Uh, thanks, Ty. Love you, man. Thanks, Landon. Love you too, man. Let's see you guys love soon. You guys.